I, I, I know Senator Graham didn't mean this, but I, I believe in the system. But the American people right now are skeptical about the system, about the system. And I happen to believe that the FBI is the premier law enforcement agency in all of human history. And most of the people there just get up every day and do their job in a bipartisan manner, a nonpartisan manner. But what Senator Graham and Senator Grassley are asking in light of history, in light of the context, is not unreasonable. There's no question that for a, at least a period of time, there were people in charge of the FBI who acted on their political beliefs. And I'm not talking about former Director Hoover. I'm talking about Mr. Ray's predecessor. The director of the FBI at that time decided that he was going to investigate not one, but both presidential candidates. With respect to one, he decided to proceed, with respect to one of those candidates, he decided to proceed on the basis of information that we now know was manufactured by that candidate's opponent, which we call opposition research. In terms of the second presidential candidate, Secretary Clinton, she was investigated. A reasonable person can debate whether or not she should have been, but the FBI director at that time called not one but not but two press conferences to talk about the investigation. And after he concluded it, he then opened it back up. And then he called a second press conference. It might have cost Secretary Clinton the election. Now, the American people have seen all this. And in many cases in government and democracy, it's not, it's not the substance, it's the perception. And I don't know in this instance, now that the question has been raised, why FBI Director Ray and our Attorney General can't answer Senator Graham's and Senator Grassley's question and put this to rest. Senator, I'm just thinking about the timeline. This form, FD 20, 1023, one specific one we're talking about here, came up during the Trump administration. The FBI received this information during the Trump administration. And for whatever it was worth, it was communicated to President Trump's attorney general, Bill Barr, as well as the FBI. They were in on the conversation as well. Think about the timeline of when it occurred. What was happening in America during that timeline? We were just about to vote on the re-election of President Trump and whether the American people would have him as an, for another term. And now his attorney general has this information, which some have alleged shows a $5 million bribe to the President of the United States, Joe Biden. Attorney General Barr has this information before the election and we didn't hear about it? What does that tell you? Was it a cover-up by Barr? For what purpose? Uh, this has now become a sinister conspiracy, but I think the timeline argues that it isn't, that there was disclosure and obviously lack of credibility in this FD 1023. Meanwhile, David Weiss is still hot on the case years ago in Delaware as the U.S. Attorney of Hunter Biden. He supposedly, from what I'm told here, was given the same information. Nothing happened. Maybe that means it's not credible. Maybe that means that these reasonable Republican leaders under President 
uh, Trump decided it was not credible to pursue it. But now it's back again, coincidentally, with a week when the former president's appearing before a uh, judge in Florida. It uh, just happens to surface again. I, I think uh, I, I'd like to have the question answered that Senator Graham asked, but I think the circumstances suggest that if there is a smoking gun here, some members of the Trump administration would have brought it forward long before now. Mr. Chairman, I, you, 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 there, there's a lot of wisdom in your words. But I, once again, you have to consider this in context. You correctly described a 1023. When Senator Grassley first raised this issue, after the whistleblower came to him, um, the FBI wouldn't even acknowledge there was a 1023. Then the story changed. There was a 1023, but you can't see it. Then the story changed. Okay, you can see the 1023, but we're going to heavily redact it. They, I suppose they didn't know Senator Grassley had seen the original document, but he knew what they redacted, which were the allegations about the tapes. Consider the context. I'm not going to go back through what I just said, but the American people are looking at all of this, and they just want an answer. I agree with you. We don't need a conspiracy. Let's end the conspiracy. But for the life of me, I can't understand why our Attorney General and our FBI Director can't come in front of the Judiciary Committee, in front of, of, of God and country, and answer uh, Chuck and Lindsay's question. And if they say, we're investigating this, then we back off. If they say there was nothing to it, perhaps we, we should ask, okay, can you explain why? What's un unreasonable about that, given our history over the past five years? Senator, if I might say, sure. this may be a headline on the Daily Conehead, but we're, I have good Sorry, news. I didn't hear you. This may be a headline for the Daily Conehead. Yeah, you like that, Daily Conehead? I like that very much. This year, as in every year that I've chaired the committee, we will have an oversight hearing in the fall with the FBI. And we will have an oversight hearing with the appropriate agencies that we're responsible uh, to oversee. Uh, so you said bring the FBI in, we're going to. It, if I may, Mr. Chairman, <clears throat> it's not quite.